today, everybody that's attending this session, which we think is going to be extremely interesting and certainly relevant, not just to the Middle East and North African region, but to the world as a whole. We have a very distinguished panel of experts, and perhaps they would like to introduce themselves um, uh, according to my um, uh, order of, of screens. Perhaps um, uh, Walid Zambari, Professor, you would introduce yourself briefly. Thank you, Phil. It's good to be with you. I work as a consultant of resources management in the Arabian Gulf in the University of Kedah in Bahrain. My interests are in security and food security and security and the nexus at home. And that's it. And that's it. Is there anything more you want to say about No, we will learn more about you as the morning progresses. Dr. Ragab, perhaps you would introduce yourself briefly? Yes, uh, good morning uh, to you all. Uh, my name is Raghav Abdul Azim. I am first under security, uh, Minister of Water Resources and Education. Uh, my work mainly is uh, policy formulation and uh, strategies, uh, coordination among different organizations and departments and departments of the ministry. Uh, uh, my experience, I used to work for water allocation uh, in Egypt, then uh, monitoring uh, programs, then uh, I've been uh, appointed to be uh, director of uh, rehabilitation of barrages uh, on the line and the canal. After that, I have been appointed to be head of irrigation of prohibition project. Then, uh, currently, I am the first under secretary of the ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Hank. Yes, thanks so much, uh, and thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'm Hank Alvin. I'm Hank Alvin, Special Envoy for International Water Affairs on behalf of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And in uh, this position, I represent the Dutch government around the world on the issues of water and water-related challenges across the Sustainable Development Goals and the challenges of climate change uh, many places around the world face. It means I uh, help... Uh, Let me know. Video or not? No sound fail. Yeah, for some yeah. reason. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I can hear you. Please, please, please continue. Please continue. Please continue. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's a There's lot a, of echoes lot of on the echoes. But that's, okay. that's okay. I represent the Dutch government around the world on the issues of water, sustainable development, and climate action. Uh, in the places that are most vulnerable, um, and that means often in the context of post-disaster floods, droughts, conflicts, uh, uh, pollution, uh, but hopefully more and more in places where we can build sustainability and resiliency. And uh, uh, working in uh, uh, Africa and the Middle East for quite a bit. So I look forward to this panel, and thank you for hosting. Thank you, Dr. Hank. Pasquale. I feel a good evening, everybody. Um, um, I've, been, um, I've been working, um, working for FL for, for the last, for the last uh, uh, almost, 20 almost 20 years as a chief, as a of, uh, chief of water, of water, water service, service in Rome. I've been also I've been chairing, chairing UN water, water, water for three years. For three and years most importantly, importantly, I believe is. I believe is Is, yes. and basically managing the program of FAO in this region with a focus on water scarcity. Um, now I've retired from FAO and I still uh, am around as a senior water advisor. Pleased to be with you today. Thank you, Pasquale. We were expecting a minister, uh, the Minister of Water from Iraq 
but he does not seem to have registered. Um, I, I can't see him anywhere. Um, Amr Fauzi, can you just clarify whether the minister from Iraq is going to be with us? Yeah, for sure. That's a technical problem. We are solving. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Ahmed Omar, do you want to introduce yourself? Ahmed is not the Prime Minister. He's the Okay. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to get. I know Pasquale very well for a long time. Um, I have known Dr. Ragab for some time. I'm looking forward to getting to know the rest of you through this panel session. We're going to be looking at water security through five lenses, beginning with infrastructure. Then we're going to look at water security in the arid regions and the role of trade. Then we're going to look at the need for a holistic understanding of um, water efficiency. We're going to look at integrated water resources management. Is it an end in itself or a means to an end? And if we have time, we're going to have a look at the economic characteristics of scarce water. We have a series of questions which have already been posed to the panel. I will be introducing each question with a little bit of background, explaining why I think uh, they're important. But before we do that, um, Dr. Ragab has very kindly uh, agreed to provide a, a, a keynote presentation for us on, on infrastructure uh, and the relationship of infrastructure to water security. So, Dr. Ragab, thank you. The floor is yours. So my presentation mainly is on uh, water security in Egypt. Uh, I'll start today. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Amr, how much time? Is that good to me? Around 15 minutes, sir. 15 minutes, okay. So, uh, I have to be uh, a little bit fast. Yeah, I start with the water the challenges in Egypt. Uh, first, population growth. We know all that we, uh, the population grows in a very limited area along the Nile. Uh, we have limited water resources, mainly from Nile. 97% of renewable water comes uh, from outside the country. Uh, there is an impact of, uh, impact of upper Nile developments, increase in water demand and then competition among sectors. You know, the drinking water increases because population increases and uh, affects the water alloc allocated to uh, agriculture. Uh, there is a gap, uh, food gap. Uh, the irrigation and drainage network is old uh, network. need to be rehabilitated. We have water quality issues, uh, impact of climate change, need to raise the public awareness on water issues, and the need for adequate investments needed to enhance water sector infrastructure then uh, there is a need to update uh, legislation. Uh, if we talk about water scarcity in Egypt, uh, look at the water resources available. We have the mostly from River Nile, 55.5. We have some rainfall, uh, uh, non-renewable groundwater, 2.45 billion cubic meter per year. We have uh, desalination about 0.35. So the total water resources available is 59.6. Uh, based on water stress index, you know, Egypt is currently suffered from water scarcity and approaching uh, in a few years the, water, the absolute water scarcity. Uh, the per capita in 2037 is expected to be about 400 uh, cubic meter uh, per year. Uh, the table shows the uh, classification of uh, water stress and scarcity according to the uh, uh, per capita, you know. So what I can say from the table is that Egypt is uh, practicing uh, not scarcity, even absolute uh, scarcity. Uh, impact of climate change. Uh, Egypt is vulnerable to climate change. You know, if you look at the map of Egypt, you know the inflow coming to Egypt from Upper Nile may be affected. The sea from the north, the sea level rise will affect uh, the delta area and uh, the canal network. Uh, in the eastern, you know, the sea level rise also and the flash flood, uh, rain storms, you know, causes some problems. Uh, in the west, we have hotter and drier uh, weather. So uh, Egypt is very vulnerable really to climate change. Uh, if we look at the water footprint, the total water demand for Egypt is 114 billion cubic meters per year. Imported virtual water is 34. 
available water resources 59.6 billion cubic meter per year. Then there is a gap between water resources available and the supply, which is 20, uh, and the demand, which is 20 billion cubic meter per year. This gap is being closed by reusing of the energy water. So, Egypt, you know, uh, developed the water strategy 2050, you know, in order to secure the water for future. Then, from this water strategy, the, na the National Water Resource Plan, Resources Plan 2017 to 37 have been developed and uh, published. Now we are working on the implementation of this plan. We had what we call it urgent plan 2017 until uh, 2020 is to implement uh, a very important measures, you know, and then we continue to complete the implementation of the plan. Uh, if, if there is a problem with the voice, please uh, tell me. Is it okay, uh, Am? It's okay, doctor. Sound is fine. Oh, okay, good. So, the National Water Resources Plan in Egypt is based on four main pillars. The objective of this plan is to uh, achieve water security for all by year 2035. The main four pillars to enhance water quality, this is the first pillar. The second pillar is to rationalize water use. Water use. The, second, the third pillar is to develop water resources, to find additional water resources. The third pillar is to create enabling environments. So, if we look at the first pillar, improve water quality, and really we are work, working very hard in this uh, pillar, you know. We, uh, we are uh, trying to improve the water quality in agriculture, in household, in industrial, uh, to reduce the pollution so that any drop of water can be used either from agricultural drainage, from sewage. So this is a very important water quality. From that pillar, we conceived a national program on enhancing water quality. This program has been started in 2018 to treat the drainage water and use it in agriculture. We started with Mahsama drain, tertiary treatment for Mahsama drain and use of its water in agriculture. This project has been recently finished and ready now to use its water. We started another project for drainage use, which is treatment of our tertiary treatment of Bahr al Bakr drain and use also its water in agriculture. Uh, we have another project like uh, to treat all sewage water along the Kitchener drain in Middle Delta. So this is a very important pillar, and the government really started seriously to uh, implement this pillar. The second pillar is to enhance the water management, uh, the water management in Egypt through some uh, measures. First to improve performance of national water resources infrastructure. And this is very important, really. Uh, improve performance of private irrigation and drainage system. We have what we call it Miska and Marwa, the farmers' uh, ditches and the canal. Raise efficiency of water management in agriculture. Improve performance of drinking water supply. Household water use, rationalize. Industrial water use also rationalized. Agricultural water use rationalization. From this pillar, also national programs have been uh, started. Uh, the first one is to improve the canal cross section through rehabilitation and reshaping of the canal cross section. You know, to cope with the water scarcity. We have many problems that farmers at the canal tail end cannot find water. So through this program, farmers will uh, have uh, water and the conveyance of water will be improved. So the government developed a two-year plan, you know, to complete rehabilitation of 6,000 kilometers of most problematic branch canal. We have a plan to cover 20,000 kilometers of branch canals, you know, 
we started to fill we, uh, this year and within two years we'll finish about 6,000 kilometers most of problematic canal. The rehabilitation, as I said, includes reshaping of canal cross section, lining, rehabilitation also of regulators and canal offtakes, as you see in the pictures here. You can compare between uh, uh, the earthen canal and the lined one. Uh, the lined canal for sure will uh, improve water conveyance and make water available to all farmers from the canal beginning to the canal tail end. Uh, the program will help facing the water scarcity in agriculture, reduce seepage and other conveyance losses, create a space for roads also along the canals. These roads will help farmers to uh, market their uh, products, you know, and uh, uh, transport them out of fields to the uh, cities and, uh, and to uh, uh, markets. Uh, Really, this project also will create jobs for, vill for villagers to work the, during the project, during the construction uh, period. Another national program for, uh, to improve uh, irrigation water management uh, uh, through uh, implementing the on-farm modern irrigation system. There is, there is a joint plan set up between the two ministries, Ministry of Water Resources, and the Ministry of Agriculture to cover an area of one million fat dam to uh, practice modern uh, I'm afraid I'm muted here. Amr. No, oh, no, it's okay, Dr. Vega, please proceed. So, uh, so uh, it's okay now, you can hear me. Okay? Yes, yes, okay. Continue, please. Okay. So, the, the, the plan, the joint plan between uh, the two ministers is to cover uh, one million of modern irrigation uh, during uh, one year, you know, or from 20 to 21, is to go mainly the uh, lands uh, along the uh, delta fringes, you know. The, the plan will, ex, will be extended after that to cover 5 million fat dams in all the lands, mainly for sugarcane areas, for trees, you know. Uh, uh, this also will help to meet, uh, or to cope with the water scarcity. Uh, the ministry has encouraged farmers' initiatives to use modern irrigation, helping with them with advice, extension fields, awareness program, you know, uh, competitions among farmers. During Kairi Water Week, uh, you know, some farmers would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, would be selected to be give some prizes, you know, who implemented modern irrigation. Besides the importance of modern irrigation to face water scarcity, additional benefits included increased in productivity, improved quality of agricultural products, rationalized farming inputs such as fertilizers, really. That's why farm, the farmer himself was encouraged to implement modern irrigation. And the, he was uh, uh, fast in, mod, in implementing the modern irrigation, you know, but the government has to support him through awareness, through providing him with funds, you know. But because the farmer knows the, the return from this uh, economic return, from this uh, or, uh, project, you know, like increase in productivity, which they were encouraged to use uh, modern irrigation. Therefore, the income of modern irrigation is surely foreseen by farmers. Uh, job creation has been noted in installing the components of modern irrigation. We have seen that some people in villages started to have some uh, workshops to, uh, uh, you know, to sell the components of modern irrigation, to fix uh, modern irrigation, to work with uh, farmers. So really, this project... Uh, is a good project even for job creations and uh, to improve uh, farmer uh, production or agricultural production and uh, to cope with water scarcity. Uh, these are pictures, you know, from uh, uh, fields in Egypt. You know, you can see that the, uh, the modern irrigation, uh, uh, you know, gives better and healthy plants. You know, the national program campaign on modern irrigation 
was based on farmer to farmer dialogue. You know, uh, we uh, uh, you know collect farmers. You know, and we ask each farmer to present his experiment and experience among his neighbors. And this was a good uh, tool to uh, encourage other farmers and extend the areas of modern uh, irrigation. Uh, if we go to the third uh, pillar, water resources, augmentation, and developments, uh, we have some measures like continued cooperation with Nile Basin countries, additional rain and the flash flood harvesting, additional desalination of water, uh, additional groundwater, but we have to be very careful about groundwater because it is non-renewable, and we, now we have a, a, a big study really is going on to determine which areas we can use groundwater and how much water can be uh, withdrawn to have a sustainable uh, agriculture development. So uh, another national program, really, we started already through coordination uh, with Ministry of Housing also for desalination. The coordination started, and there is a joint uh, policy to cope with water scarcity. Include uh, this policy included all cities and the communities along the sea coast will depend on water desalination to meet municipal water requirements. So there is no uh, more mine water goes to uh, cities along the uh, sea. Even existing mine water supply to coastal areas will be replaced by desalinated water, like uh, we started already with a pump station called Al Alamein, will be replaced by uh, uh, desalination uh, water. So this is, was a policy and already started to be implemented between the two ministers, Minister of Housing and the Minister of Water Resources. Okay, also climate ch changes mitigation measures, like flash floods, you know, as I said, there is an impact, and Egypt is vulnerable to climate changes. In the eastern desert, flood protection dams are being constructed to protect communities, communities. from this flood. Five more minutes, Dr. Ragab. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Go so, uh, groundwater tanks constructed to store rainwater. So, these communities, small communities, will be, uh, will depend on uh, flash floods, you know, to protect the, the communities and to store water and it can be used in like in small lakes and mountains. Uh, we developed additional rules for coastal uh, developments, you know, a rehabilitation of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the coastal protection. Uh, we had a study, we determined which areas are vulnerable in the Nile Delta, you know, the red uh, sea, uh, coastal areas, you can see it here. This is the most critical areas. We start to uh, protect these areas. We have, uh, you know, these are uh, examples of short protections, you know. Uh, we have another uh, program working with GCF grant to use natural protection of about 69 kilometers, and we are implementing it uh, now through these reeds, and uh, that uh, may make sandy dunes and then we can protect uh, delta areas. Uh, uh, enabling environments, you know, legislation, uh, awareness. Uh, we have these, um, you know, uh, some awareness campaigns is being in schools, uh, mosques, church, you know, uh, young people. We have uh, transboundary cooperation to meet water scarce also with uh, mild basin countries. Uh, use of technology to monitor water use. This is very important. Now we dep depend on satellite images to monitor crop plantation and harvesting progress, and then to allocate water uh, on time. We have telemetry system to monitor canal water and to make sure that water is allocated on time and at the right uh, quantity. So uh, this is very brief, and I don't want to be, uh, take uh, much time. Uh, and thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, I am ready to answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ragab. The e Egypt's plan for its water sector is highly commendable. You are 
looking at quality, quantity, you're looking at institutions, you're looking at how water is used, you have transboundary um, implications, and I know that you're transferring the, the benefits of your water management upstream with investments and technical assistance. But, of course, cross-cutting to all of this is infrastructure. Uh, we need infrastructure. The world needs more water infrastructure. 